All righty. J. Patrick Morgan, the wise men say do. And this is end of day's discussion. And uh, the topic on this end of day's discussion is called The House Divided. The House Divided. Um, how does that apply biblically? Uh, you, you, let's go with the New Covenant, uh, the New Testament. The very, very day, evening, or whatever time of day it was, that uh, Jesus was born. You had uh, the hallelujah and uh, the big celebration of the angels when they was telling the shepherds uh, that uh, Christ is born um, and stuff. But yeah, they, they were. Uh, they had a big uh, dancing in the sky and, and um, put, um, put on a big to do about this. And of course, it's a, a big to do. You know, it's a big thing. You know, and uh, there's a lot of focus on that, but specifically in that stretch of several verses, there's one particular line that say, uh, states the end game, the objective of Christ coming to the earth, uh, stated by the angels wasn't stated by a person. The shepherds didn't say peace on earth, goodwill towards men, neither did the wise men. Um, the angel proclaimed peace on earth, goodwill to all men. How does a house divided bring peace to anybody? How does a how is a divided house extended goodwill to anybody? It's not. It's not. How did all these wars in the name of Christianity bring peace and goodwill? And it didn't. If anything, some of uh, uh, some of that activity in early Christianity caused all kinds of other cultures to hate Christians. Um, Witch trials caused witches to hate Christians. Uh, it, uh, breaking down the uh, Native American tribes and stuff that worshipped uh, uh, the great white spirit and proclaimed spirits and animals and did all these different uh, rituals that Native Americans do. And Americans come in and beat them down as savages because they aren't Christian and told them you better become Christian or this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, it caused a hatred from Native Americans today towards the Christian white people that came across the ocean, you know. Uh, you know, that... Uh, the opposite of peace on earth and goodwill towards all men. You're supposed to preach the gospel to all nations in love for them to accept or reject. Um, that is what the Bible directed. It didn't say beat the gospel into anybody or extort the gospel into anybody. Or, you know, it didn't say do that coerce the gospel into people. No, didn't say do that. Um, so we shouldn't be doing that. But uh, back on the topic, we're talking about a house divided here. We're talking about the United States of America, the great USA. The great USA whose merchants have deceived all nations with their sorceries. So I guess the USA ain't all that great in God's eyes. Go look at it in Revelations. It says the light shine, will shine on you no more uh, for your great um, men of the earth have deceived all nations with their sorceries. Uh, that means 
like I had stated in previous videos, USA is going down. God's no longer interested in blessing America. America in God's eyes doesn't deserve to be blessed and USA is going down. The light shall shine no more in the USA. Um, we know that's coming and there's things that we have to do on a united front to prepare for all of it. For starvation and shortages and, and uh, civil war uh, revolts um, and things of that nature. Uh, the natural disasters that come, uh, whatever they may be, national emergencies, martial law, all of it. Uh, we should be preparing for the seven skinny cows to finish eating up the seven fat cows. We should be preparing for the king to send his soldiers throughout the city and, and kill everyone's firstborn child. We should prepare for those things when we get warnings that those things are coming. And how are we going to do that if we're not united, if we're all divided? No man is an island. We can't do it on our own. We have to be uh, united, and no matter what. Uh, and uh, the problem lies in, um, in a lot of basic things that the Bible tells us to do or not to do that we're doing the opposite of what the Bible says. There, there are several factors, and one of the biggest ones is who we put in our trust into. We're putting our trust into people who want us divided, you know, because they know a house divided shall surely fall, and they want that house to fall, so they're deliberately dividing the house. We're putting our trust in that. Uh, the Bible doesn't say put our trust in those kinds of people or people in general. It says trust in the Lord with all your heart and soul in all things. And uh, so it does not tr say trust in Fox News or MSNBC or CNN News. It does not say trust this Democrat favorite Democrat candidate or trust this favorite Republican candidate. The Bible doesn't say that. In fact, as far as politicians, it, it lines out that you don't trust in these powerful entities that they call government. It, it showed you what they're capable of. David was fully willing to put a man on the front lines of a war, knowing that the likelihood that he comes back alive from the front lines of that um, war is slim to none, just so that David could have his wife. Mm, that's how much we're supposed to trust in our governments, in our leaders. It does not say trust in your government and your leaders with all your heart and soul. The Bible doesn't say that, and we're doing that. So therefore, we're being divided. Uh, the news does tell you some things that are the truth, but for the most part, the news is divisionary propaganda. They want Republicans at Democrats' throats. They want Democrats at Republicans' throats. They want uh, races against other races' throats. They want religions against other religions' throats. They want straight people against gay people's throats, and they want gay people against straight people's throats. They want you divided. And they're using the news as a propaganda tool to do that. The news is not owned by some independent people that are looking out for your best interests. They are all a big, huge corporation. They, they align with the other corporations that pay them advertising dollars. They align specifically with uh, a Republican or a Democrat. Fox is aligned, aligned in America. One American News, they're aligned with Republicans, and MSNBC and CNN, they're aligned with Democrats. You know, if they're that biased in the first place, then they're not trustworthy. 
They should be reporting the news right straight down the middle without any support of either political pa candidate. They say what's good about a candidate and what's bad about a candidate, and they do it all up front, all the good and the bad and the ugly with the whole truth, or they're biased and they're not to be trusted. Don't trust MSNBC or CNN or Fox or uh, One American Network. Don't trust any of them. They're biased. For causing division. They're doing the opposite of creating unity in this nation. Don't trust them. They want a house divided. The controllers that own all these big international corporations, they want a one world government. That means that the, for a one world government, the United States is no longer allowed to be sovereign from a global government. You can't have a sovereign United States if we're going to have a global government and a global currency and a one world religion. You can't have in the United States and have that too. Not gonna happen. Therefore, they want us divided. They want a house divided. And they want us to fall. And they're doing a damn good job of it. Um, strong communities have some unity in it. Um, whether that person that your neighbor cheats on their spouse, or um, you know they uh, were guilty of thievery at one point or another, or or some other thing, um, it is non-affecting. You, you, a strong community means you put all those judgments aside and you do what's best so that people in the community eat. They have shelter. They have the things that they need. And uh, if you have a divided community, uh, whatever is dividing that community, rich person versus poor, uh, rich neighborhood versus poor neighborhood, and. Uh, you know, this person's committing this sin versus that person's committing that sin. You know, he who had not sinned themselves gets to cast that first stone. When it comes to things that are important for peace and goodwill and a united community that supports each other and helps each other and, and ends suffering and ends death any place and anywhere that they can, um, that's a strong community. Strong communities survive these things like chaos and natural disasters and, uh, and all these things that the end times might bring to us. Uh, war, famine, pestilence, all of that. They, uh, strong, united communities survive those things and they move on and they move forward because they survived and eventually when they get those three things they go back to more than just surviving they're thriving the bible says the meek shall inherit the earth uh, what does meek mean it means humble silent unwavering not easily excitable not easily angered not easily manipulated um, the America that I see that's at each other's throats is not meek. You're not going to inherit the earth. You're not meek. You're letting these people make you angry. You're letting these people make you violent. You're, you're letting these people scam you. You're, you're letting them manipulate you. You're not meek. You're not going to inherit, inherit the earth. You're going to go down with everybody else that's not meek. Uh, you don't think that the United States is this great nation that's not capable of falling and stuff like that. The Bible specifically says your great men of the earth deceived the nations with their sorceries. The light shall shine in you no more. That's talking about the United States. <laughs> Down with the United States. God is not interested in blessing the United States. We've become too wicked. We've become too unruly. We're not doing what God says anymore. Why should God bless America? 
He didn't bless Israel when Israel became wicked and unruly and, and caused suffering among themselves and, and suffering among anybody they've come in contact with. He, he, he just let the Assyrians or the Babylonians or whichever time Israel became corrupt again just walk right in there and destroy everything, take all the gold and silver out of the altars and take it over to um, the king's area somewhere and, and, you know, just totally ravish the country of Israel. The United States does the same thing. He's going to let people ravish the United States, and it'll probably be China that ravishes the United States, ultimately. We've come to that point. God has no interest in blessing America because he sees what America has become. And part of America going down, the way to take such a strong military force in the world and a powerful uh, uh, financial institution with U.S. money and, and stuff uh, like that. Uh, well, one of the things is to take away their economy and put it, uh, put it into the crap hole, um, m make inflation so that our dollars are worthless. We owe uh, way too much money to these evil entities, these international bankers and these international corporations and stuff. We owe all this. Um, they're trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. Um, someday they're going to want to collect. And if uh, this nation falls financially, you ain't going to like how they collect. We aren't going to like how they collect. Uh, this nation falls because it's divided and nobody's standing together. And, uh, you know, uh, it's all about what Jesus would do. Uh, Jesus didn't uh, feed thousands of people fish and loaves in the in in the pretext of um, okay, this person over here they're responsible for some thievery. They get no fish and loaves. This one over here is responsible for adultery. No fish and loaves for that person. This person has a jealousy problem and this person has a gluttony problem. No fish and loaves for them. You know, uh, he, you know, he uh, cast demons out of somebody. He wasn't, uh, uh, you know, he knows those demons were affecting in every sin that that person created. And he, instead, he stood there and he cast demons out of that person. He told people, don't be stoning this prostitute to, to death because you yourself have sinned. What, what right do you have to, to stone this prostitute to death? You know, when we go out into the community to bless communities with struggling people, we're not going to give a sandwich to this person because we've seen their vehicle in church a few times and, and uh, we've stand, seen them stand in a prayer circle and this, that, and the other thing. We're not going to give them a sandwich when they're hungry. And this person over here is a lesbian. Oh, uh, you're a lesbian. Um, I'm not going to give you a sandwich. No, that's not what we do. The Bible also says, that which you have done unto the least of my brethren, translates to brothers and sisters, you know, um, it's unisex um, talk. Uh, you have also done unto me. Well, who is the least? Um, the least of means um, less important or unimportant, you know, of no importance. Uh, Jesus loves everyone, everybody's important to him, even if they're still in the world and not even considering Jesus, they're important to him. That's the least, you know, a prostitute and a thief and, and uh, a uh, murderer or rapist that's sitting in prison or out on parole or whatever, um, you know, those are the least of his brethren. He says, you visited me when I was in prison. You know, that means you're not, going, you're not going to care that they're in prison or what they're in prison for. You're going to go and preach the gospel to them. You're going to pray for them. You're going to uh, 
pray that uh, the, the rest of the convicts treat them decent and the guards treat them decent as they possibly can. You're going to pray for their rehabilitation. You're not going to be hating on them. You know, uh, the least of is not what Jesus considers unimportant or of no importance because he considers all of us of importance. He's saying what he, in the least of he's putting in, in, in our context, our man's judgment of who's not important um, for whatever reason. You know, that uh, the sayings of today, once a thief, always a thief, once a cheater, always a cheater, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's not the truth. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says everybody is capable, once they put their mind into it and are really serious about it, of repenting. Repenting means changing their mind, changing their thinking, of seeking forgiveness. And they must be willing to, of course, uh, because it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That means we have to forgive in order to um, receive um, his forgiveness. Um, if you're divided and at each other's throats, you're not exactly forgiving that person that you're ready to strangle, are you? You're hating on them. If we're divided, there's no peace on earth, there's no goodwill towards men. You're not holding goodwill towards that person that you've been divided and caused to have great grievances against for whatever the reason that uh, Fox or MSNBC tells you to have grievance against them. You know, and uh, what we need to stand resilient in all the events of the end times, whether it be natural disasters or war or a pestilence that was brought on by a man-made virus called coronavirus, COVID-19, that's man-made. Don't let them say, uh, to tell you otherwise. That's a man-made virus. It was made on purpose and it had a, a end game with it. Uh, gets people used to the idea of the mark of the beast. You don't get to keep your job because you didn't get vaccinated. You don't get to go in the store. You don't get to go to these concerts and these events because you didn't get vaccinated. It's a control mechanism that they want everybody used to that will set them up later into accepting the mark of the beast where you don't get to buy, sell, or trade anything and that will be tolerated for a while. You can live out in the wilderness as that and the other thing. Ultimately, it says whosoever does not worship the beast, it would cause to be killed. Um, the image of the beast in everybody's home, that's your information machine. That's your computers, your TVs, your cell phones, all those places where you're getting this propaganda information out of its mouth spews blasphemy. What they're telling you is a little bit of truth um, about, uh, like the weather report, for example. They're, they, they, they're not accurate, but they don't mean to lie to you. Um, they get the weather wrong. Um, but anyway, so it, when they're telling you the weather, if there's a storm coming, they want you to take shelter from the storm. If there's a heat wave, they want you to prepare um, for, to um, take extra measures to make sure that uh, people susceptible to heat stroke are staying cool. If there's a deep freeze, they want you to prepare in all ways to um, keep yourself warm, or keep yourself dry in a rain shower. Um, stuff like that. So that's, uh, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. It's all this other stuff that goes to a political side or a religious side or a philosophical side of something in the way that they report it. It's to cause you to fall away from God. Blasphemy are lies with the specific intent to cause you to not consider God or not call upon God, call upon the government or somebody else besides God. 
it, um, that's what they want you to do. Um, th that's the definition of blasphemy. Blasphemy or lies that will steer somebody to something else or someone else besides God. Out of the TV's mouth spews blasphemy. Out of these specific um, news reporting websites that are aligned with either Republicans and Democrats, uh, they're trying to divide you when God doesn't want us divided. He wants peace on earth and goodwill toward each other. He wants us to love our neighbors. God doesn't want that. It's blasphemy. Outright blasphemy what they're doing to you. Do not trust your TV set. Do not trust your politician and uh, your favorite politician with all your heart and soul. Trust God with all your heart and soul. Do not trust your brother and sister or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you know, with all your heart and soul because they will screw you over. They will take advantage of that trust. They see that trust in them as a way of them having power over you and the ability to manipulate you, and you do not trust them. You pray to God before you get married to make sure that is a person that you'll be able to at least reasonably trust. And you don't live with them before you're married to them because that's a, they, they can betray your trust all the more. Um, and, uh, you know, you're trying to get to that point of uh, having that be your forever partner and you, you're going to, you know, and uh, they're going to manipulate how badly you want them to be forever your partner. You, you don't trust uh, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, sister, and brother with all of your heart and soul. You're going to get screwed. Not to say don't trust anybody with anything, you know, I mean, there is a certain level of trust that goes with a relationship, whether it be a, a, a intimate relationship or just a friendship relationship or just a business relationship. You have to have a certain amount of trust there that at least there, there are certain things that they're not going to do. But as far as putting all your heart and soul into that trust, no. Don't trust them because they're a police officer. Don't trust them because they're a, a Republican instead of a Democrat politician or vice versa. Don't trust them because of those things, you know. Don't put all your trust into them um, because they say they're a Christian or they say they're something else that you might um, want to try to trust. You know, that's where you're messing up. You are letting all these entities divide you and then you, instead of a strong community you have a weak community because you're not united you're not you're not sticking together you're judging each other over this that and the other thing when they, um, just judge not lest ye be judged you're going to be judged right back and then there's going to be chaos and and fights and war and division and um the whole uh first end game objective to Christ being uh, coming to this earth was stated by the angels when he was born peace on earth goodwill towards all men and if you're a house divided you're not going to have peace and there's going to be no goodwill none J. Patrick Morgan, the wise man, say do this is end of day's discussion on a house divided. Get ready to fall.